Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Um, hi, uh, welcome to my meetup on introduction to graph neural networks. Uh, thank you, Christos, uh, for giving me uh, this opportunity to speak at PyData Cyprus. I am, uh, well, I'm a little bit nervous because it's my first ever meetup. So if you see me drinking from a, a bottle of wine halfway during the talk, don't be alarmed. <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic. Um, okay. We'll, we'll so, also grab a beer then just, just to, uh, <laughs> to support you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, so before I start, I also want to shout out to the automation team at Nate. I am very grateful for all of your support to help me get ready for this meetup. Uh, and yeah, just to... And a little commercial time for me. Um, I would uh, like to uh, tell you about this amazing startup that I work for, Nate. And as Crystal introduced, that Nate is a New York and London based uh, startup. And we are all working together to revolutionize the online shopping space. Uh, basically, we allow users to purchase anything online with just one click buy. So the checkout is powered by machine learning automation. And this is done in a complete secure manner to protect um, our users' data privacy. We also have some really cool uh, social sharing features like gifting. So uh, please feel free to check us out. So without further ado, let us begin on graph neural networks. Oh. Uh, here is uh, the content of our workshop today. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are a few chapters, but I promise they will be uh, short and sweet. So we would first by introducing the definition of a graph and uh, the basic theories of graph neural network, as well as uh, some applications. And then we will dive in deeper to compare uh, different variations of graph convolution. Uh, at the end of the workshop, I will show a small demo to perform node classification using Stellar Graph. Okay. So first, uh, what is a graph? A graph is a set of nodes connected by directed or undirected edges, where each node uh, represents real world entities and an edge defines a certain type of relationship between a pair of entities. But moreover, each node may contain information about the entity, which we define as uh, the initial node features. And usually they are represented by a fixed size vector. So, in the case of neural network, uh, in the case of social network, uh, node features can um, nodes represent users, and node features can be uh, personal attributes like age, gender, locations, and so on. But beside a social network, uh, there are uh, many other types of data that can be represented as graph, like molecules uh, or transportation network, etc. So yeah, um, as we know that uh, most of the popular uh, deep learning frameworks work really well with um, images and sequences that can be represented by fixed size vectors or matrices. Um, but graph is a bit more unstructured in comparison in the sense that a graph contains uh, arbitrary number of nodes with arbitrary number of connections and there is no fixed ordering of data points for it to be modeled as a sequence. So is there a machine learning model that can work efficiently on graphs? And uh, the answer is yes. Surprise, surprise, it's called graph neural networks. So graph neural network is a set of deep learning models that can be directly applied to graphs. Um, it is introduced back in 2005 but they started to gain popularity in the last five years um, due to their versatility to suit uh, any type of problems. They work based on the idea that um, nodes, so entities in a graph can be uh, contextualized by the features of all the entities that they are associated with. 
just like how tokens in uh, a sequence of text can be contextualized by its surrounding words. So the goal of a graph neural network is to compute a node representation that encodes its initial features as well as uh, its connections. And this node representation is represented as a fixed size vector like HV. And by leveraging the rich information from HV, we can uh, build much more accurate models for different types of tasks. Generally speaking, um, the real world applications based on graph neural networks can be categorized into the following groups. So the first one and uh, the most common one is node classification. Uh, this is when we classify the label of a node provided uh, its node features and its connections. So for example, uh, in a social network, given this person's um, personal attributes and their, his or her connections, you may predict if this person belongs to a certain community or has a certain political leaning, for example. You can also kind of transit from um, a node level classification to a graph level classification by combining node, the node embedding from all the, from the targeted region. So in this case, you are classifying an attribute about a group of users. But, and the third one is link prediction. That's when um, given two nodes that are unassociated, we estimate the probability that they could be linked. So commonly used in friend recommendation. And graph similarity is when we uh, compute um, the similarity between the graph structure. And this is really useful uh, in the context of the white web where the hyperlink network of a website can be represented as graph. And given a website, you could make recommendations uh, on a list of websites that have similar hyperlink structure. And according to this paper, it also helps you to identify websites or resources that is the most authoritative. And graph generation has been the hot direction in the context of drug discovery. Basically, compounds can be represented as graph, where the nodes represent um, atoms and edges represent uh, a certain type of bond. And in this paper, they are generating uh, chemicals with desired properties using a two-flow generation model. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Last but not least, uh, GNN has been really influential uh, to Nate, especially when it comes to website representation learning. And essentially, web pages can be represented as graphs. So we can apply some of those graph-based techniques to contextualize parts of the page which allows our model to navigate through the site like a human. Uh, so in summary, GNN can be suitable for problems in a wide uh, range of domains. And I just found out that yesterday, GNN can also be used in quantum computing. Um, I hardly understood anything from that paper, but it's kind of mind blowing. Right, so back to the basic. Let's understand how GNN work. Specifically, how does GNN learn the embedding from the graph neighborhood? So it aggregates the features of the neighboring nodes using a special operator, which is what we call a graph convolution operator. So uh, let's first think of a image convolution. They kind of exploit the fact that images have a regular connectivity pattern. So uh, by that, I mean uh, each pixel can be surrounded by eight other pixels. It aggregates the neighborhood pixels by applying kernel filters of big size. And graph convolutions are kind of similar, except it aggregates uh, any number of node features. 
So specifically given the target node, it aggregates the information from each of its neighboring nodes up to a certain search depth. Uh, and also just like image kernels, it can be both uh, non-parametric like mean pooling, or it can consist of some learnable weights, which you will see in, in the later slides. Uh, so there are uh, many variations of graph convolution, but typically they can fall into two categories, the spectral and spatial based. So in the next couple of slides, I will explain the differences between them. And you will see that spatial is a much more efficient and scalable approach than spectral. Is everyone uh, following so far? Any questions? All right, I'm gonna dive in deeper to understand uh, the difference between spectral and spatial graph convolution. So the first generations of uh, graph convolution were spectral based and they have a theoretical foundation in graph signal processing. So it treats um, the operation as removing noises from the graph signals, that is the node features. It basically operates on the entire graph all at once, followed by a series of really complex linear algebra operations in order to obtain H. And H is a matrix that represents the final node embedding for all the nodes in this graph. And on the other hand, Oh, sorry, before I move on, uh, HK represents the node embedding after applying uh, the convolution layer for the kth time. But moving on, um, spat spatial based approach, however, operates on one node or a batch of nodes at a time. Uh, it does so by learning an aggregator function to aggregate the information from neighborhood to the target node. And this is the expression uh, after one uh, convolution layer, right? Don't worry if this doesn't make sense to you initially. Uh, I will walk through an example to illustrate this in detail. So this is our example graph. And as you can see, spectral generates the Laplacian using this, this formula, and then it normalizes the Laplacian matrix which is then followed by uh, an eigen decomposition of this Laplacian matrix to obtain a, a set of orthonormal eigenbases. And then it performs Fourier transformation of the node features. And G here represent a set of learnable weights. And basically many, many complicated <laughs> maths operations. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. So, eventually you would arrive at this expression. But seriously, do not worry uh, because you will see why uh, spectral is no longer a preferred approach. So when it comes to spatial, it operates the aggregation on one node at a time. So for example, uh, first at uh, node one, we would aggregate uh, the information from node two and node three, as well as the initial features from node one to obtain a updated node embedding for node one. And we would repeat this for all the nodes in this graph. And this counts as one convolution layer. So essentially you could just initialize the embedding for all the nodes in this graph to be their initial node features, you repeat this convolution for a number of times in order to get uh, their final uh, embedding for each of the nodes in this graph. So let's do a thorough comparison in terms of application. Spectral models, as you can see, um, operates on the whole graph. So it suffers from uh, some drawbacks in terms of scalability. 
it requires the whole graph to be processed simultaneously. So this can be very um, impractical for large graphs that contains billions of nodes and edges, such as a social network. Whereas spatial do not suffer from the scalability issue because they directly perform convolution uh, on a neighborhood basis. So together, you can also incorporate some sampling strategy. The computation can be performed in a batch of nodes instead of a whole graph. So it can be done in parallel, which improves the efficiency for training. And the biggest limitation for spectral is the fact that it cannot generalize to unseen graph. So any change that you make to this graph will result in a change of the Laplacian representation. So this means that if you change uh, the eigenbasis and everything, you need to retrain the weights. Therefore, it can be impractical for graphs that constantly evolves or changes. Whereas spatial, on the other hand, uh, can be generalized to unseen graphs quite easily because the aggregator weights can induce uh, the embedding of unseen nodes based on the structure. And on top of that, spatial-based models are flexible. They can handle graphs with uh, different structures like graphs with multiple edge or node types. And because, because these variations of the graph input can be incorporated into the aggregation function. Right, and going back to the algorithms of these two approach, we see that both of them involve uh, applying the convolution layer repetitively, repeatedly, sorry, my English, repeatedly. Um, and the intuition for this is that every time we apply the aggregation layer, we would uh, propagate the information uh, up to one hop. So the more layers you apply, the further the information gets propagated from its source node. Therefore, uh, the richer your final embedding would become. Okay, uh, having introduced spatial convolution, uh, I am going to now uh, introduce to you uh, two of the most popular frameworks for spatial convolution, which is GraphSage and uh, Graph Attention Networks. So first we have GraphSage. GraphSage is a really popular uh, model that is uh, used for inductive learning uh, on large graphs. So uh, like we introduced earlier, it learns aggregator function that can induce the embedding of a new node given its features and neighborhood. And it trains an aggregator function uh, to aggregate neighbors at different search depth. And specifically, what do we mean by aggregator function? It is a function that accepts neighborhood as input. So specifically a set of node embeddings from the neighborhood and combine the embedding to create a neighborhood aware node embedding for the target node. As you know that the node's neighbors should have no natural ordering. So an aggregator function should be invariant to uh, the node ordering or permutations. And aggregator function can be both non-parametric, such as uh, mean pooling or max pooling, or it can be uh, parametric. So it can contain learnable weights like a simple neural network. Uh, the most popular one, the most popular learnable aggregator is a single layer neural network followed by max pooling operator. You could also use LSTM, where you would feed the node representation from the neighborhood as a sequence, but you need to randomly shuffle the order so that your model can learn uh, with, uh, without overfitting to a certain order. And the propagation step, which is uh, the embedding generation step for GraphSage, is really similar to what we have seen earlier in a spatial convolution. So first you would initialize uh, the node embedding 
in this graph to be the initial features. And then you apply um, multiple convolutions where you aggregate, for each node, you aggregate uh, the features from its neighbors. Then you concatenate this neighborhood uh, features with uh, the features of the node. And then in the end, you uh, normalize it. You normalize the final embedding. Um, and uh, yeah, and you obtain ZV, which is the final representation for your target node. I've broken these down into those little boxes. Um, but essentially, <laughs> graph stage in a nutshell is simply just those four steps. Right. Moving on to training. So how do we train a graph stage? So you can train it in a both supervised learning and unsupervised learning setting. So in a supervised learning, uh, you may uh, train it to minimize the cross entropy loss. And in the unsupervised learning, where you don't train with labels, you train with the assumption that um, nodes which reside the same neighborhood should have a similar embedding like this. And nodes that are independent should be far away from each other in the embedding space. And you could uh, achieve this by uh, minimizing this loss. So J, J, uh, ZU defines the loss at node U. And V is a neighbor of U. PN, this should be PNU, is the negative sampling for U. So that it's a sample of uh, nodes that are not in U's neighborhood. So you could break this loss into two parts. The by minimizing the, the first part of the loss, you maximize the similarity. So the inner product between uh, the embedding of U and the embedding of V. And similarly, the second part, uh, by minimizing the second part of the loss, you minimize the similarity between Z, U and this independent uh, node. So having seen the theory of graph stage, uh, I would like to introduce uh, an application for it, which is used by Pinterest for post recommendation. They adapted uh, the algorithm for graph stage into their own framework called PinSage, where it uses an, important, an importance-based neighborhood sampling uh, with a random walk so that nodes with the highest visit counts will have highest weights in the aggregation step. So they contribute more to the final uh, node representation. But alternatively, you can also use attention mechanism to determine the importance of neighbors. So this brings us to the next uh, variation of graph convolution, which is graph attention network. So like I mentioned earlier, a uh, graph attention network computes um, a sort of attention coefficient uh, of each of the neighbor nodes when it comes to neighborhood aggregation. So that the, your node representation becomes a, well, a direct, can be derived basically from a linear combination of the neighborhood features like this. They are weighted by those attention coefficients alpha. So alpha ij here represents um, the importance of node j when aggregating information for the target node i. And alpha is computed using an attention mechanism that is represented by the function a. Furthermore, uh, JT applies the multi-head attention uh, for better expressive ability. So for example, um, here we have three attention heads and each attention head computes um, an equivalent expression like the one you see here. 
So, but each attention head used different sets of weights. And in the end, the features from all the attention heads are averaged to obtain the final representation. And here I included a slide to explain uh, how the attention mechanism work. Um, but due to time concerns, I will skip this for now. But if anyone is interested to know more about it, uh, feel free to ask me at the end of the workshop. So to wrap things up, uh, here's a short summary on uh, the theory we've covered so far on GNNs. So we have uh, seen that spatial approaches are more desirable for learning large graphs due to the fact that they are more computationally efficient and they have uh, better generality and better flexibility. We also covered two of the popular spatial frameworks, GraphSage, that uses um, aggregator functions, and you can incorporate sampling to assign importance to neighbors, while a graph attention network use multi-head attention for neighborhood importance. Okay, I'm about to move on to the application part. So since graph has gained a lot of attention in research and applications, there are a couple of really well-developed GNN packages for Python. Um, my personal experience, I've used PyTorch Geometric uh, which is a graph deep learning extension library for PyTorch. And I have used a stellar graph that is built on TensorFlow and Keras. Both of these packages uh, contain uh, a huge variety of graph models and a lot of um, common benchmark data sets for you to explore. While I recommend both of them, I found stellar much easier to learn for beginners. So in the next 10 minutes, I will walk you through a node classification example using Stellar Graph. And this node classification task is performed on a citation network data set. So this citation network data set consists of one citation graph. And this graph contains uh, roughly 3000 publications and they all classified into seven subjects as such. Uh, this network consists of over 5,000 uh, links. And each publication in the data set has an initial feature of uh, 1,400. And this feature is derived from a dictionary, depending on uh, if those words from the dictionary are contained in the publication. Right, so the goal of this node classification task is to classify the subject of the paper given its initial vocabulary features and its citation connections. And then we would also like to explore whether or not uh, incorporating graph structure can help with node classification. So we will compare a simple neural network as a baseline model with GraphSage and GAT. Here is the experiment setup for this demo. And to keep a fair test, uh, all the node subjects are split uh, in this proportion. There's a standard value of dropout applied to all the models, and they're all trained to minimize the cross entropy loss. And to evaluate the performance of our models, we will mainly be using test accuracy, but we will also um, use a qualitative approach uh, where we assess the structure of the embedding using TSNI plots in 2D. And to help you uh, to get an idea on uh, the initial node embedding, this is the TSNI visualization of the initial uh, vocab embedding for all the publications. And they are colored by uh, their ground truth subject. So yeah, it looks like a big hot, a big hot mess. Um, so let's see if applying um, some graph models can help the representation become more structured and more meaningful. 
Okay. I'm going to get my scripts ready for the demo. Just bear with me. All right. So this is um, PyCharm, uh, and I will be running my experiments in those two main scripts here. So the first one is uh, train baseline, which trains my baseline model. And the second one uh, trains the graph neural network models. So GraphSage and GAT. Uh, those two scripts are structured in a similar way. So first we, we get the data set from Cora. We get the features from the graph, followed by um, binarizing the, the target labels into one hot vectors, right? And then we would perform the train test split on the data set. And here I build my baseline model, which is simply a two layer uh, neural network. And then I train it and evaluate it on the test nodes. Okay, so let me run this to get the baseline results. Okay, now I'm, let's look at the graph. Uh, the graph training script. So like, like the baseline script, um, it kind of has the same structure except here, we build, uh, we build the model using uh, GraphSage and GAT imported from uh, um, Stellar Graph. We also uh, build a generator that uh, generates a batch of nodes and their connections at training time. So don't, we don't have to train on the whole graph at once. And let's look closely in the models. So here, my graph sage model uh, consists of two convolution layers, each uh, producing an output of 32 dimensions. And my graph attention networks uh, also consist of two convolution layers, but it uses eight attention heads. So both of these graph models output a final embedding for each of the nodes. So we stack a prediction layer on top of the embedding to, uh, to output the label. Right. And after we define our model and our generator, we create the generator flows based on the training validation and uh, test data set. Okay. And then we can just train the graph model like uh, using model.fit, just like how you would train uh, any other Keras deep learning model. But this time we are using the training generator flow instead of uh, the training data set. Okay. And uh, one thing to uh, also to mention is that when we visualize the embedding of our model, I am taking uh, the final layer from the graph models. So that is the layer right before softmax as the embedding layer. Okay. Oh, uh, I didn't realize the results for the baseline is, is finished. Okay, so let's see. First, this is the TSNI visualization for the embedding from uh, the baseline model. So the data points looks kind of segmented with, uh, but still with a lot of overlap. 
And the test accuracy is uh, roughly 62%. It's not so bad. Okay, uh, let's see if graphs can do better. Oh, no, this one, the other one. Okay, so right now I am training uh, the graph attention networks for the same number of epochs as the baseline model. Okay, so the test accuracy is 77%, which is a significant improvement to the, to the first one. And here is the TSNI visualization for the graph attention networks embedding. And as you can see, there seems to be uh, some clear clusters being formed. So yeah, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good uh, embedding space. Okay, let's try graph sage. So what was the one you just ran? The graph attention? Oh, yeah. Okay. So right now be better, I'm right? getting hmm? graph attention. Uh, hmm. I really don't know at this point. <laughs> it should be because it contains eight heads. So the information that it can encode should be very rich. And I also see that actually, um, graph attention uh, is doing pretty well in terms of not overfitting to the training data in comparison to the baseline. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, uh, so there we have our graph sage test accuracy, which is 79%, slightly higher than um, graph attention for some reason. <laughs> okay. And here is the TCD visualization of the graph stage embedding. It looks very well structured. I couldn't tell which one is better. But yeah. This is the end of the demo. So it's graph neural network is not a myth. It actually works in real life. <laughs> Am I still sharing my screen? Oops. No. Okay. Right. Let me right. Share, just to wrap it up. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, so this, these are the results that I obtained earlier. And they are somewhat similar. So the one thing that we can definitely conclude from this demo is, is that uh, GraphSage and GAT, by incorporating um, the graph structure, um, can lead to very uh, significant improvement to node classification. And they also help to uh, create a more structured, well-segmented uh, embedding space. So yeah, in this case, the machine actually learns, and that's good. I, I hope this demo um, would motivate you to consider applying graph neural networks whenever you have uh, graph structured data. And here uh, is a list of resources that helped me to create this workshop. I've also attached my GitHub repo. So feel free to take a look and experiment yourself. Uh, yeah, I believe this is the end of my workshop. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have any questions, <laughs> thank you. Well done. I hope I haven't rushed a lot of things. Thank you very much. So, it was really interesting. <laughs> thank you. Uh, if you